Hello Aquarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my January 2020 horoscope report for you. In this video, it is my intention to prepare you for the astrological weather in January, similar to how you would check the weather report before you pack to go on a trip. What I like to do is to give you the astrological weather report at least a month early so that you know what you are in for and you can prepare in the most wonderful ways to help make the challenges easier and to help use the sweet spots because you know they're coming. Okay, so overall a very positive month for Aquarius. I'm going to outline the reasons why. There are a couple of spots where there may be a little trouble and I'll point those out to you and offer some suggestions. So the first thing that I want to talk about is how we have this, let's see, movement of Venus through your sign, okay? There is a massive amount of Aquarian energy this month, okay? So for the um, first half of the month, you have Venus continuing to move through your sign. Then for the second half, where are you, buddy? Mercury, okay? For the second half of January, Mercury is going to come over here and join the Aquarius party. And then, of course, towards the end, the last third of the month, the sun is going to move from here and get into the Aquarius zone. So this time of year is very much about you all. It is birthday time. Um, so happy birthday if it's your birthday. The solar return time is the time when the sun in the sky gets back to the same point that it was at when you were born. This is solar return. This is a time of birthday wishes. So happy birthday to you. This is also significant even if you're watching for Aquarius as your rising sign or your moon sign because when the sun crosses over those placements, um, it, it gives some similar rebirth energies and energizes similar to how um, birthday energy does. So by the way, this report is for you if you're an Aquarius rising, if you have an Aquarius moon, if you have an Aquarius sun. So if you haven't already watched my Making Wishes Come True video, search for Annie, Making Wishes Come True, you'll see my video. It will help you to maximize your birthday wishes and maximize other astrological power periods that you might not even know about um, to help make your dreams come true. So we've got all that going on. So when the planets, the personal planets, the ones closer to us, move through our sign, it brings enlivenment, it brings um, sometimes enlightenment, it brings activity, it brings um, symbiosis, it can bring synchronicity. You know, it's, it's like, it jives, it speaks your language. So it's coherent, it makes sense. And the more planets you have speaking to you in the language you understand, the easier it is for you to do the most with the potentials. So we've got just a lot of friends talking the way you understand this month. And one of them is Venus. Venus rules love, beauty, and money. Venus is the energy that I, my grandma Marge epitomizes. If you've watched my videos before, you know grandma Marge. So um, having Venus in your sign, this only happens for a little over a month, every like year and a half. So this is notable for you. So you can expect boosts to love, money, relationships, um, finding your voice, finding your expression, um, have, improving your health, you know, or at least coming up with answers to why you might not be feeling well. It's good for that type of research too. So all in all, super positive energy. I'm circling these things, <laughs> but we have to draw the sun in there. We have to put Mercury in there. Okay. So we've got the Aquarius party and that's going to be positive for you. Okay. So the second thing that's super positive, that is a reason to smile for Aquarius has to do with Mars moving into Sag. When it was moving through Scorpio, it was ugh, 90 degree angles, challenging angles, not in sync with how you are. Mars is how we use our energy. So like the energy center, I call it the border collie of the Zodiac. If you've ever seen border collie, they're like obsessive and hot on something. Like my one border collie will bring in pine needles from outside and just like bring the pine needle and stare at the pine needle and put the pine needle down and pick the pine needle up. <laughs> you know, and Mars energy is, is, is how we use our energy. That's how border collars use that energy. So when the, the, the Mars moves into Sag, this is very relevant for Aquarius because it changes that angle. So it's going to make, um, 
you know, less waves, it'll be less aggravating, it'll make you less, you know, aggro. And um, it's just, it's again, just a nice blend because Sag is super laid back. You might notice this if you're an Aquarius or you have notable Aquarius placements, you might have a lot of Sag friends. I know I have a lot of Aquarius friends, I'm a Sag. And it's just like, it's just easy, you know, it's just, you don't have to put that much into it. It's just natural. You understand each other. So now this is a fourth planet that is going to be speaking your language and it can help you be super productive because you can get things done in the way that makes sense to you. And because this month, excuse me, is the most important month of the whole year for getting things done, it's going to really help you to have Mars on your side because starting in February, we start that wall of retrogrades that will persist through all of 2020. We only have a few days in the whole year where there's any like really coming up for air from this retrograde focus. Now, please hear, I love retrogrades. I have a thousand um, reasons why retrogrades are positive and why they can be positive. I have lots of resources, videos, and blogs on how you can use the retrograde energy in the best way. And I'll be talking to you about this as we go month through month here. But certain things it's not as great for is gaining a lot of momentum, launching something, making huge decisions, having clarity about things, having things come together just right to kind of burst it, launch it, bring it, change it. And there's going to be a massive amount of transformation in the air, lots of opportunities coming to you to change your life, either out of your control or in your control because of these eclipses. Now, the eclipse is on January 10th. It's um, a very emotional, um, solar lunar, I mean, not, not solar, lunar eclipse in Cancer. And I go into way crazy amount of detail about these eclipses and the one at the end of December and this one. So definitely refer to my video called January Eclipse for Aquarius, okay? And in that one, I'll go into all of the specifics about where you can expect to see these changes come for you, how I've seen them come for people in the past when they have it lined up in the way that you have it lined up. So it's very extensive. Also watch my video for um, November because November's horoscope includes the December eclipse, which is still going to be relevant in January. So if you're having things going on and you're not understanding what's happening, I have, it's a very long video. You might, you might have to scroll to get to the, the point where this is relevant, but I promise you it will be worth it. So that's happening so life-changing things are occurring this month for many many people there will be some people that are just holding space as other people go through these crazy changes or you might be doing both you might be holding space for other people or you also are going through a lot of change so it's definitely going to be a busy active life-changing month for most people but because you have all this extra sweetness um i think there are a lot of potentials for it to be super favorable for you Okay, the other thing to note is that we have this massive conglomeration of energy in Capricorn. In general, Capricorn energy is not as smooth with Aquarius. It's kind of like two ships passing in the night. You know, it's like, I don't really understand you, but I respect you, that's cool, like I get it, but I'm not really there. So there, there is going to be long-term energy persisting. Um, but the way I see that is positive because I'm an optimist. I'm always looking for, yeah, okay, maybe it's a challenge, but what, how this is going to, how is this going to be good for you? And that is, it's forcing you in the long term and in the short term to quantify, to take action on, to strategize and implement plans for your things that you think about and talk about. Aquarius energy is very intellectual. It dwells very much in the world of thought, the world of ideas. That's why it blends really well with the Sag energy because Sag is have all these ideas and talk about everyone and do all this stuff and philosophize and you know, Aquarius is the same way. But the Capricorn energy wants you to do something about it. It says, well, that's all nice, but what are you gonna do about it? So you'll feel that pressure to take action. And if you're not, like actually doing the launch or actually bringing it out, it is forcing you to narrow down, organize, strategize, make plans and start implementing things. So it's not completely comfortable, <laughs> but I don't think that it's a bad thing. It's just putting pressure on you 
to do some things that are going to help you and you'll benefit from in the long term. Great news about this massive lineup in um, Capricorn is that you can experience major positive effects from work that you've done in the past. Anything that you've done to honor the um, principles of Capricorn, which are hard work, discipline, persistence, can show up for you in a big way now, partly because this Saturn Pluto lineup, they're going to come completely together um, in this month. And that only happens once every 34 years. These two outer planets being at the same degree, and that's going to happen around the 12th, 13th, but you could feel it really anytime this month. So it's like, it's wanting you to put your money where your mouth is, you know, and this is an amazing month to do that. So it's nice when it lines up that the pressure's there at the same time as it's actually good to do something about it. But you will feel, um, some of the possible, there will be the possibility for some somber news, some serious news, some um, rude awakenings. It could, um, you know, be critical. Um, so there's a lot of ways this, you know, massive amount of Capricorn energy can manifest. But fortunately, these other things are moving through Aquarius that can help offset some of the heaviness and help you kind of then go back to your mind space and kind of make sense of it all. Okay, so those are the things I most have on my mind for you this month. Overall, I think a very positive month, a little bit of awkwardness, a little bit of stress. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. Where this energy is um, joining, and this is true for all early, middle, and late degree Aquarius placements, so regardless of where in the Aquarius spectrum you are, all of these things we've been talking about are, are completely true. But there's a little bit of extra heaviness, or we'll just say a lot bit of extra heaviness in your mind space, like in your a mind emotional body it's it's like your subconscious mind so that can cause some cracking if there's weakness that can cause um a lot of pressure that might be difficult to deal with could be overwhelming but it can also cause you to have to do something about whatever is on your mind you know that's stressing you out or pressuring you in order to deal with it so, you know, if you definitely, you definitely want to try to keep as much, I told you I would recommend some things about um, how to handle the heavier things and getting a lot of rest is helpful because we all know when you're well rested, it's easier to deal with whatever comes your way. The second thing is if you don't already meditate, I highly recommend meditating. I've meditated every day for over 10 years without missing a day. And I know that, you know, being a Sag and being all over the place, it's part of the way that I can like really stay centered <laughs> through everything because that's like that grounding cord. So creating a grounding cord, if you don't have one already, returning to your grounding cord, yoga, you know, um, anything like that, doing deep inner work, hypnosis, past life regression. If you have a pattern in your life that's coming up over and over again and you see it in yourself, you see it in your relatives, this might be a, a time where it culminates to a point where you have to do something about it. And sometimes looking into the past life energy, even if you don't believe in past lives, this, the energy of past life that I'm talking about could come through transgenerationally through DNA. You know, it doesn't even have to be your soul's experience in a different life. It could be something that came to you through imprinting, through blood. Um, but there, it looks like there's a lot of that coming up at this time. And the pressure might be so high that you have to do something about it. But the good news is that then you actually do something about it. And you might say, gosh, I wish I would have done this sooner, you know? So have your grounding cord, your meditation, yoga, um, get some help, outside help, things like that, getting your rest. Those things can help to offset some of these heavier combinations of Capricorn lineups that are coming in, plus the location of the chart that it, it is for you, that where it could bring that extra heaviness. Some of you, you know, I'm not a doctor, so you have to check this with your body, with your um, physicians. Many people can have their depression lightened by proper um, fish oil, you know? So just look into that. If you were on it before, you're not on it now, might be a time to bring it back to help to just give you a little bit, give your brain the, the fuel and the support that it needs to process whatever is going to be coming through here. Okay, so make sure that you claim your free access to my 28-day virtual coaching program called Shine. You do this when you go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, and sign up for my free email newsletter. You also get other perks from signing up for that newsletter, which includes a write-up of all of the notable aspects, the day-to-day -day aspect, 
the what you can expect from the aspect plus a written general overview of the general transits one month early in your inbox you also get that from signing up there at annihelpsyou.com if you feel like you've got karma you have to clear and you want to live in your highest purpose i have a new reading um, called clearing karma and living in your purpose and you can see that at annihelpsyou.com also, if you want to be a professional astrologer and you resonate with how I teach, then you will love my program on becoming a professional astrologer. You can see this and you can also see my course called Secrets of a Six-Figure Consultant on my site, AnnieHelpsYou.com. If you want more things from me from astrology or the astrology standpoint for free, also at AnnieHelpsYou.com, you can see my blog, which is very extensive. And if you want written horoscopes by me, you can go to CozyBySweetStarlight.com. I have an Astrology for Wellness blog where I have blogs on how you maximize the sun moving through the different signs, yoga and crystal, or um, yoga for different signs. I have crystals for different signs on Annie Helps You. Um, I've got a new segment or a new blog called um, Herbal Teas for each sign. So starting with Sagittarius, that is that will be out there. So I think that you'll love Cozy by SweetStarlight.com. You should definitely check it out just to see how beautiful it is. It's an amazing site. If you missed the website names, you can catch them in the links underneath the video. So I hope you have a wonderful month, and I'll see you next month. Bye!